we really take the lead based on the face value of the lead. So a lot of people in the industry want to disqualify the lead because they're burning through a high volume of low quality leads. Uh, we prefer a lower volume of relatively high quality of leads, and I'm taking more from a lead standpoint. I wonder, TJ, if, um, you know, setter versus closer, right? So how you apply mm -hmm. that model, um, you know, or moving moving to, the, you know, maybe longer sales cycles. Yours maybe tend to be, I don't know, I don't know what your average sales cycle is for your deals that you're doing. Um, but I'm curious if someone has a longer sales cycle and, you know, you just need, you know, even more lead setters and some of the deals take longer to, to, to actually come to fruition. How might you change the strategy for um, a setter versus a closer and such? So I think I definitely understand what you're talking about. I think that depends a lot on the lead type and the urgency of the lead. So not all leads are created equal and not all leads, you know, you can have a high urgency lead with a low urgency average lead to flow type. What I mean by that is if you have a PPC lead or a direct mail lead, it's inbound and there's a relative sense of urgency with that lead. And that takes a somewhat different skill than a long-term follow-up with uh, like an outbound cold call type lead or a more of a nurture type of lead. So it's, it's not, it's not necessarily so much, I don't know if it's so much the setters versus the closers. The way we approach that is one is a really fancy CRM that costs a lot of money and I don't know how to use it. I've never logged on to it, but that tells us what's going on with the leads uh, at multiple stages in the sales cycle. And I have a guy that manages that instead of me because that's not my core competency. Um, and then one thing that we do do is we really take the lead based on the face value of the lead. So a lot of people in the industry want to disqualify the lead because they're burning through a high volume of low quality leads. Uh, we prefer a lower volume of relatively high quality of leads and I'm taking it more from a lead standpoint. So the way we'll buy better is we'll play, we'll play good cop, bad cop in some respects. We'll send two acquisitions guys out on appointment where one is able to talk about the, the kids and the pet dog and the cat. And the other one is more able to talk about the numbers of the renovation and the, and the transactional aspect of it. Um, our average talk time, for example, on a relatively high quality lead on an inbound lead for a, like a, like a first contact is probably 30 minutes. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Cause you know, some calls go to cell phones and whatever, but a lot of people, they try to disqualify the lead. They try to get off the phone and onto the next lead as quickly as they can. We're more about, well, let's figure out what's the urgency of this lead and what's necessary to op optimize on this lead. And then how do we have the conversation with the seller and set the expectation with the seller, either short-term or long-term, you know, some, and some of those leads too, you know, uh, I will call you back in two months when you're maybe a little bit more ready. So you call them back in, you know, one month because you want to, you want to kind of be forefront when they're ready to make the decision. So I think it really depends a lot more on the lead type. Uh, the more notes you have in the leads, uh, like, uh, on the specific lead, the more able you're able to optimize what's going on. And the way we do that is by just keeping a pretty tight rein on, not from a, not from a managerial, like dictatorial standpoint, but more just a tight, tight eye on, okay, what's going on with this specific lead? Let's have a conversation about this one. Um, and kind of the same as we rank our like buyer criteria when we're selling retail, we, we rank our leads similarly where we, uh, we get a sense of the urgency and then rank the urgency of the lead and we approach it, you know, somewhat differently from that perspective. That was long winded. I'm sorry. Yeah, that, was, that was really, that was really good TJ. Um, by the way, first of all, what's the name of the CRM that you use? Yeah, uh, we use a Salesforce based one. Uh, I don't remember what the, um, uh, I don't remember. All I know is it was seven grand a year ago and I thought it was a real pain in the butt. And now it's, you know, now we've already paid that and now it's just a couple hundred bucks a month, but it's, uh, it's good. We don't like Podio. We were on that before with beast mode, buddy of mine owns the beast mode add on to Podio. I like it, but it's very clunky Salesforce. It's a beast in itself, but it's very dynamic and, uh, like versatile in the marketplace. So I the guys like it again. I legitimately do not know my log into it because I never logged into it. Yeah. That makes sense. Cool. So it's like a Salesforce thing. Okay, cool.